get to take my beautiful wife out tonight for dinner for my birthday. And she's here today. She's, she's due next month. And she came. And number six, child number six. It happens fast. Was it, was it, what was his name? Was married to a prayer? Mark? Mark, dude, tomorrow you're going to have like six kids. <laughs> okay, it's going to be crazy. You're going to wake up and you're going, what did I just do? It reminds me when I'm on the airplane on my honeymoon. I'm all happy. We're going to Hawaii. This is going to be great. And I look over and the stewardess comes up. She goes, hey, would you like to buy some earphones? I said, absolutely. How much? Five dollars. Okay. And my new wife goes, oh, well, I'd like some too. Oh, ten dollars. <laughs> two, two times five. I'm going to have to pay for her for everything. <laughs> this is going to get expensive. I'm off my dad's credit card now. This is, I don't know if this is going to work. I started crying. I'm sorry, I'm just telling you my feelings here. It happened, it's real. She could have tested this. It was a sad moment. I didn't even watch the movie. I pretend I was crying during the movie. There's probably some Adam Sandler movie, for all I remember, it was like supposed to be comedy, and I was crying. And she's huh. like, are you okay? I said, absolutely. In my mind, I'm thinking, I'm not okay. This is not good. Now, sometimes when you have an idea, fear strikes, does it not? You think, no, I can't do it, or there's naysayers. People around you say, mm, can't do it. Wouldn't be prudent. It's not going to work out. And then maybe your wife, maybe your spouse, maybe yourself inside, you say, ah, can I really do that? Can I really accomplish that? Why don't I talk about how you can? Now, when I was a kid, I borrowed some money from my dad. I said, Dad, I love baseball cards. I want to buy a bunch of them. I know I can sell them to kids. He's like, all right, I'll lend you $200. Here you go. And I bought 1990 Fleer baseball cards, cases. Okay, I bought a couple cases of them. Actually, I bought one case, sold a bunch, bought some more. They were actually the air. They were airs, meaning they were rare because there's a bunch of airs in them. I was going to score big. Well, what I scored big with was cases of baseball cards and I never was able to sell. So I just started opening up out of Great Depression and just got a bunch of old baseball cards that are now sitting in my house today. So if you need any 1990 Fleers, I got a lot of them. And I started my first business of selling baseball cards. I failed. I failed. It didn't work. Then, there I am, I'm like, you know what? I can mow lawns. I can do this. Anyone here mow lawns for a living? You know what I'm talking about? I'm not talking to your parents' lawn. I'm talking to your neighbor's lawn, right? It's hard. It can be, especially when you want to go maybe hang out with your friends and you have to mow the guy's lawn and he's calling you up saying, hey, Nick, do I need to get my goats over here and like cut this grass down because my lawn needs mowing? Ah, oh, the blackers, I'm sorry. Yes, I'll be right over. So, what do I do? I'm 14 years old. I get in my old Datsun truck. Okay, this, isn't it. this is actually a lot nicer than my Datsun truck. My dad, he was crazy. He let me drive at 14 years old. I got two pieces of two by fours, and I pushed that Honda lawnmower up, right? I push it up, and I go to three or four homes that I'd mow the lawn. I got a phone book, and I would sit on top of the phone book of this old Datsun, this mustard yellow Datsun truck, and I went and mowed lawns. Well, I learned that, you know what? I can mow a lot of lawns. I can make a lot of money. You guys have probably done the same thing. But it can only last so long. It can only last so long. It was a great, it was a great lesson in my life. Now, one of the things I did, you just read this down here. Don't go to this website. It's not for real, but I should go buy this domain name. I don't think it's, it's illegal business, meaning I don't think this is an illegal business. I'm from Arizona. I asked my dad again, Dad, can I get a loan? 15, I want to buy fireworks. I want to sell them in Arizona. And you're videotaping this and it's going to get out on the web. And if people are going to hear about this and maybe put in jail for it. But I'm going to risk it. I bought fireworks. You guys, you don't understand. Who's from Arizona in here? Do you buy fireworks in Arizona and live in Arizona? No. No, it's not right but you can make a lot of money doing it. <laughs> and so the 15 year old, what did I do? I did it. And so actually I bought a bunch of fireworks. Again, I don't know why my dad was, I think he was trying to teach me, you can do a business. This was actually a success, but I'll tell you about the failure. Now, there's a kid right after his bar mitzvah down the street, I'll never forget, he had $300, $300. He came to me and goes, Nick, 
I just made a bunch of money. My part mitzvah. I want to, I want to spend all my money and buy all your fireworks. I'm like, yeah, I like this. And he goes, but I'm scared of lighting them. Will you light them for me? Wait, you're going to pay me for my fireworks and I get to light them? Okay, I guess I'll do it. <laughs> I guess I'll do it. I thought, I don't like the fireworks, and he just stands there. I mean, the joy. Has anyone lit a firework in here before? Yeah. What's the joy? Getting that match out as a little boy and lighting the firework and running away. I've had, I've had M80s pop in my hands before. And put them in grapefruits, we chuck them all of a sudden, boom, they blow up. It was awesome. Okay? It killed my ears, my hands. But I'll tell you, this kid, he had $300. It was awesome until something happened. I promise. The one I didn't like, he had a couple left. He lit them. He ran to my house the next night. Guess what happened? He lit a lady's backyard and her whole porch on fire. A fodder rocket. <laughs> Boom! Blew up. Lit her whole backyard. Trees, back porch, everything on fire. Gonzo. I was gonzo. I thought I was going to J-O-O, if you know what I mean now. I mean, I was like, this isn't going to happen. I had to seriously confiscate all those fireworks as quickly as possible. I didn't like the one, I promise, officer. I didn't like this one, but you sold it to him. Okay, guess what? Business shut down. Business was done. It was over with. Again, a failure. Now, I moved on to my next business. I could, I could paint street signs, you know, numbers on a, uh, on a, on a curb. You guys ever seen those? Right? Easy. In fact, I don't even want to paint. I don't want to paint them. I'm smarter than that. How about I hire my dumb friends? I actually good friends. They're great friends. The ones that maybe didn't mind getting paid minimal wage. And I was just gonna book it and run from house to house to house. And just sell them and they would fulfill on those sales. Well, this is kind of what I got. They just started doing chalk. You know, and they, they didn't really start paying me. And they're like, this is hard. I go, guys, you don't have to do anything. Just get the numbers out, spray paint, white, and then black, the numbers. It's real easy. And I pay you five bucks. Now I made 12. I pay you five. Yeah, but Nick, you're making all the money. Well, yeah, but I'm selling it with my idea. Well, that didn't last long because I didn't want to paint. And they didn't want to do it. So I went on to the next business. Now, I said, I'm going to detail cars. Anyone in here detail cars before? Yeah. You good at it? I got a couple cars. If you want to come over and help me out. I did it again. I started selling. I started I'd go door to door to door. Hey, I can detail cars for you. I'm like 15, 16 years old going door to door and selling detail cars. I can do it. And then I had two of my friends detailing the cars. Well, this is what they end up looking like. You know, I can clean the windows. Well, God, it's not going to work. We promised them we were going to do much more than that. Well, I guess I could clean the cars too. But you guys are catching my drift here, right? These businesses, they were failing. They were falling on their face. They weren't, they weren't working. Now, so what I started doing is I started begging for money. High school. I'd go up to someone. To, I'd go up to a girl. Hey, listen, I got 25 cents. You're not a girl. I know that. But, hey, I got 25 cents. <laughs> Do you have a dollar? I need to buy a Sprite. You know, like at a football game. Yeah, here's a dollar. Sweet. I made like 15, 20 bucks every football game. It was awesome. <laughs> and then I go, hey, I have a dollar, I need a quarter. And it was amazing. My dad got ticked at me that I was doing that, but it was like this challenge of, you know, asking for money in different ways. So that's that's not me, by the way, FYI. I'm not quite sure. Um, so, anyhow, I get home off my mission. I have a buddy. After I, I do some door to door sales. He's here at a company called Apex, Vivint uh, now. I do door-to-door -door sales. It was pest control back in the days. And it was hard. Anyone that lasts the whole summer, I will tell you, you rock. If you can last the whole summer, those 100 plus days, if you, I props to you, I hire you. I hire you because I know you can, work, you can work that whole summer even though you think your area stinks. <coughs> my manager doesn't like me and you're complaining and you stuck it out. Props to you on that. So anyhow, after I sold, I went and started a mortgage business with a buddy. I had no idea what mortgage is. How do you do them? He did all the origination, all the hard work in the back end. I was doing all the stuff in the front end, and I had a call center. Well, spent thousands of dollars on a call center, office space. 
Blew up, didn't work. Failed business again. Now, went on to another company. It was a startup called Freeport.com. Anyone here called, heard of Freeport years ago? Exactly, okay? <laughs> no one. We blew through over $10 million. It was a free internet service provider. In 14 months, we had some of the most amazing talent, amazing talent ever. I ran their whole sales team. We had 72 sales reps going out to businesses, selling advertising to the people that actually were using the free internet. Okay, we became the first, the, the largest internet service provider in Utah in three months. I mean, that's how quickly we grew. But we grew that quickly because we had a lot of money to waste. And we played a lot of video games and had a lot of free food. It was an awesome dot-com era. I mean, it was cool. I mean, guys walking around barefoot in there. I thought it was so weird, but man, that part of Silicon Valley, this is awesome. But here in Utah, in Provo. So freeport.com, what happens? We blow through over $10 million. I don't know, kind of a lot of money, sort of, right? For an idea that just basically flopped. It flopped, it failed. It absolutely failed. So I move on with the next company. You guys see what's going on here? Lots of companies, lots of failures. Holy cow, lots of lessons too at the same time. So if you think you can't fail, you're making a big mistake. Um, it's, uh, you have to fail a lot of times, but the failure is beautiful. Cowboy, my buddy, he goes, hey, let's start a company. Let's break off from Freeport. Let's start a company, we'll saddle up. It's a marketing company, door-to-door -door salespeople. I'm like, I hate door-to-door -door stuff. I don't know if I can do it, but let's do it. Let's do it. And he said, okay, I'll put $7,000 in, you put $3,000, 30, 70. I'm like, wow, 30 is cool. All right, I'll take it. So we ran for about a year and a half. We started making some money. Started losing a lot of money. It was hard, really hard. We had about 110 sales reps that went out door to door in six different locations selling different products. You know what happened? Within two weeks, we had about 90 of them quit. So I don't know about you, that's not a good ratio. 20 of them still standing after two weeks of being in business, after our, it was actually our second year in business, but our first real summer. Holy cow, I'll never forget when I got the call. The very first call when he said, the manager goes, Nick, guess what, Pleasanton, California, we're gone, we're out of here, this stinks. Hold on a second, let's try to work this out. Products weren't shipping yet, the company they were representing, it just wasn't working. Sacramento, next day, called me up, Nick, we're gone, we're out of here. Guys, this, it's not fun. When you're failing, you ever been here failed before? Yeah? What have you failed at? Anyone failed at a business before? Yeah? You nod your head? What, what, what business? A rock chip repair. Company. A rock chip repair. Well, how did it fail? Uh, we hired the wrong people. You hired the wrong people. And how long did it take for you to, from the very early stages to the very last day you closed the door? Probably two months. Two months. So you realize within two months, done. Who else failed? Boom, over there in the corner, pretty sure. Real estate business. As my commercial real estate or residential? Wholesale properties. Oh, back in 07, 08, when was it? No, 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 Well, just last summer. So, so from cradle to grave, from beginning to end, how, how many months? Four months. It, was it fun? No, after the fact, maybe right now you're going, you know what, did you learn a lot? Yeah, at the moment when you shut the doors, what did you feel like? You feel pretty crappy? Yeah. Did you go like to total like seclusion, seclusion just by yourself, suck your thumb, just like, dude, I can't do this anymore? No, I don't You had a partner? Yeah, and so he did it for you? Or? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not fun, is it? You feel like a loser. You walk out and you're like, gosh, really? How do I go home with my friends, my family, maybe my spouse and tell them? Guess what? I'm a loser. I failed. Yeah, it's not very fun. It's not fun at all. Now, this is what happened at, uh, at Cowboy Inc. It, it, uh, it wasn't fun. It wasn't fun at all. Now, <laughs> failing or falling is not failing, but failing is one who does not try. At least this guy tried to do whatever he's going to do. <laughs> but I want to show you a video, and I hope I, hope I can pull this up right here. I hope I can pull it up, because you know what? This video, I've seen it probably 10 times, and maybe most of you have seen it too, but every time I see it, I'm just like, oh, come on, you can do it. 
Oh, can we not connect to YouTube here? Okay, let's do it up here. Oh, shit. It's worth it if we can find it. Let's see if we can find it, guys. Have you guys seen this? You guys hear what? Do you mind? Click on this. Oh, you guys haven't seen that, right? <laughs> that, was, that was awesome. Okay, ready? Is the noise on? Can you turn it off? Just say, dude, I'm not doing that again. 
I'm just going to go down the path that's easier. I don't want to go down this path that's harder. Have you guys ever experienced that before? Yeah, this is an entrepreneur lecture series, but this is about life. This is about life. I don't care if you're going to work for minimum wage. I don't care if you're going to work for free for the rest of your life. When people push you down, that's when you get back up. That's when you don't give up. This young lady could have given up. I'll tell you, this video is going to be shown for years to come. I guarantee half a year it'll be showing it, maybe reposting it, saying, you know what, this is me. I feel like right now in my life, and some of you may feel this way, I've been pushed down. I've been told I can't do it. I've been told it's impossible. I've been told there's no way you're going to succeed. I was told that. I was told that by actually people here at BYU. I would not succeed. My business would not succeed. I was told that by, I can't tell you how many people in our industry, in our business. Now, this is what happened. I started a company 10 years ago called One on One. I want to talk about this briefly. 10 years ago, I was sitting here 11 years ago, and that's when I visualized what I told you in the very beginning what I visualized. Started a company, $2,000, two kids, married to the best, most beautiful wife ever. And she totally believed in me. Took that money, she didn't ask me one question. We were just building our first home. Call me crazy. We weren't going to rent from her grandparents anymore, which I always knew, hey, rent from your grandparents. Guess what? We didn't think we missed rent, we could probably get rid of it. But not with the mortgage. We can't get away with it. So I went and I put down my first month's rent and a safety or a, a, a security deposit. Guys, it was fifteen hundred dollars. It was seven hundred and fifty dollars a month. I had five hundred dollars left. You do the math, can you do much with seven five hundred dollars? Well, I had a cool office, okay? I had some desks and chairs that I took from Cowboy Inc. And some, some like, like a sofa chair. Awesome, I still have it actually today. My wife wants to get rid of it, but I mean, no, we can't. Give me memories. And I go, I'm gonna start this. And this is what's gonna happen. I'm gonna start doing leads, meaning this. I'm gonna start generating leads for people. And what do you, what do you think leads, what do you mean? Well, Ancestry.com was a client of our very end cowboy. They prepaid us $10,000. In two and a half months, we generated six free trials for them, meaning this. Six people signed up for their subscription, their free trial subscription for 14 days. They paid us $90 total. So can anyone do the math of $10,000 prepaid minus $90 earned? $9,910 left. They call me up. Nick, we want our $9,910 back. We prepaid you $10,000. I got off the phone. I said, Ben, this is my partner. I said, Ben, you gotta give it back. He said, okay, let's give it back. I said, Ben, we can't give it back. We don't have the money. I gotta figure this out. So I locked myself in the office. That's when I started realizing this internet thing. Holy cow, this is cool. This is back in 2001, 2002. Wait, generating traffic to a website and then people actually convert and actually do something on that website? What a novel idea. What a novel idea. I can make money off that. In fact, I can make money off that when I'm flipping hamburgers on the weekend. Why well, I I, you know what, instead of looking for another company doing this for us that we were at that time doing, we were outsourcing it to them. Does that make sense? I said, I'm gonna pull it, I'm gonna figure this out. If it ought to be, it's up to me. So I started doing it, started seeing success. Cowboy, we closed up that company. I took Ancestry.com and $2,000 and said, I'm going to start this business. That's what I did. So I started driving traffic. Does anyone know what Ancestry.com is? Right, the genealogy service? So I started driving traffic to their websites. They started paying me. What a cool concept. I started getting paid for people filling out genealogy stuff. I felt like... I don't know, is this really right? I should be doing this for free, right? But I was making money off of it. Then came along other clients. We started generating leads for them. One thing led to another. And in the year 2011, we did over $56 million in revenue. And what I mean by that 
is we generated a lot of leads for a lot of clients, specifically in the education space. So we, in one-on-one, generates leads for universities. They want students, not BYU, but other universities. They want students. They want to find students. So I thought, this is great. I can give you students. So this is what we did. If I can actually, this is the work here, guys. That's still loading. Oh, how do you, how do you get the noise on there? Is there no noise? Okay, guess what? Just kidding. Is there a, Plug into the. It, is there a. I have to plug in probably down there. Probably the microphone. That's right. Just kidding. I was going to show you something really cool, but I'll explain it. So we drove traffic. We own 5,000 domains. Over the years, I bought domains. I love them, just like those baseball cards. There's a reason why I was supposed to collect baseball cards. Just like there's going to be a reason why you're supposed to be doing what you're doing to learn from the next thing. Rock chip repair. It may be that you're going to be a car dealer, and you're going to know exactly how to repair those rock chips, and you're going to do it for free for people who buy cars for the rest of their life. I don't know. That was free. I want 50%. Okay. Good. Good. <laughs> Wholesale real estate. Wholesale real estate. You know what? Maybe you end up actually buying a bunch of land and become a big rancher farmer, and you're Mr. Like Farmer Man. You buy this huge sombrero hat, and now you're like, you're, you're bigger than Texas. You own so much land that everyone wants to come to you to buy your land because you got oil on that land. And they want to tap into it. It's because of the experience you gained for those four short months. And that's what happened with baseball cards. It was the same thing. I collected baseball cards. I loved it. I love baseball cards. I still have 88 Bo Jacksons. You guys remember Bo Jackson? You want here? Bo Jackson put the bat on me. Played baseball and football. Bo knows. I love Bo. Now, domains. Web domains. I love web domains. It was my real estate, so I started buying thousands of domains. Thousands of them. I just started picking up great domains. Still, this guy on injury.com, boardgames.com, phonics.com, widow.com. I mean, all sorts of names you started just buying up. Not knowing exactly what we're going to do, but a majority of them were in the education space. So, the education space for universities and colleges and vocational schools. And then we would drive traffic to those sites, and we would get paid if someone filled out a form and said, Yes, hey, over here, I want to go back to school. It was great, it was fantastic. So, that's what I did. In 2010, the dream came true. Remember the napkin? Remember the visualizing the napkin? It's something I want you guys to do. Start visualizing things here. Visualizing the napkin, $100 million across the table. I'm sitting down with a publicly traded company. We're selling our business two years ago, right now. I go into his office, the CEO and I. We sit down. He gets a scrap piece of paper out. He goes, Nick. Let's forget about the investment bankers. Let's forget about everyone else. Let's just, come on, come on, let me and you. Let's talk. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Is this, is this, is this the napkin experience? He pulls out a piece of paper and he goes, what? What's the number? Let's just talk about it right now. What's the number? It was happening. You guys, exactly 11 <coughs> years ago, nine years ago at that point, but 11 years ago, it was nine years ago, essentially the date. And I was sitting in here, he slides it across. It was awesome, but I didn't take it. I just had to take another offer and actually have another partner. Another partner that I felt like was gonna be good for our business and someone that I could still retain some of that ownership. I ended up in October 21st, 2010, sold off a stake of one-on-one. -on -one. Now, in July, I stepped down and basically no longer am part of one-on-one. -on -one. But 10 years of building that business was some of the greatest experiences of my life that have prepared me for the next thing that I'm supposed to be doing. Because we're on this earth, I'll tell you this right now, we're on this earth for specific purpose and mission. Each and every one of you in this room, right here, everyone that's hearing my voice today, listen to me. 
You have a specific mission, a specific purpose that you're supposed to serve, that you're supposed to do, that you're supposed to fulfill. You have potential greater than you'll ever imagine, greater than you'll ever, ever, ever even come to even know. Our Heavenly Father has blessed you with great capacity. I hope each and every one of you know this. And there's certain things that you're supposed to do in this life, in this short period of time, that's going to help fulfill that mission. And truly, truly, at the end of the day, make a very large impact in other people's lives. Because right now, right now, the time is short. The time we have on this life is very short. I know a lot of you guys hear that at church. You're like, gosh, really? Nick, it's Monday. It's not Sunday. Why are you saying this to me? God, I have to hear it again? It's two days after <coughs> seven days I got to hear this. Listen to me. You have a specific mission on this earth. The Lord has intended you to do great things, but it's up to you to find what those great things are. It was hard for me to make that decision. It was hard for me to step down. It was hard for me to step down from the company I built for 10 years as CEO with hundreds of employees and to say, you know what? I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but the Lord's telling me to go do something else, and I'm going to figure it out. <clears throat> about six years ago, my daughter came to me, since we can't show this video. She came to me after a friend of mine was diagnosed with leukemia. This friend of mine was 26 years old, had two children, ready to die, could not get any help. Didn't have the finances, didn't have any, any health benefits whatsoever to cover his treatment. I was driving home one day. It was strong. It was powerful. I said, you can help him. I can't help him. What can I do? You can help him. Okay, what do I do? Just go, just go raise some money. Go help him out. All right, all right. So I sent out a quick email. Made some calls. And in two days, nothing that I did. Let me just say this right now. Nothing whatsoever that I did. It was an absolute miracle. And the tender mercies of our Heavenly Father were absolutely unbelievable for me to be able to take part in that experience. It was awesome. $64,000 was raised in just two days. I just, friends and family, send me money for this stranger. They had no idea who he was. But my daughter on the second day, she's six years old. She walks up to me. She's sitting in her hand. Dad, she puts in my hand. Will this be enough to save Brother Rudy's life? It was five dollars and twelve cents. She said, "It's everything I have. Do you think it will save his life?" Yes, yeah, sweetie. I think it's going to save his life. I think it's going to save his life. Holy cow! As a father, to see your six-year-old. Give you the widow's mind, give her everything she had, and to tell you, is it enough? Yeah, it's enough, sweetie. It's enough. It was a beautiful experience. That experience alone, that experience alone was an amazing experience. And little did she know, little did she know that five dollars and twelve cents. Here she is, a six-year-old. When I'm talking about you, is making an impact in this world. Did she know the impact that she was going to make? And how that was going to change so many different people's lives. Thousands, if not millions of people's lives for many generations to come. So what we end up setting now, what time is this in? i got five minutes. I'm going to cruise out of here. We set up the 512 Foundation. Right now, we're focusing primarily in Peru, in South America. My dad served a mission there. I served in Romania. I don't know Spanish. I have a tutor right now. I'm like, oh, that's my God. Now I'm, I do, I'm all over. You start speaking to me. I think I'm understanding. I'll just nod my head and say, Claudio, Claudio, totally with you. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but we've been down to Peru. We set up a foundation down there. And it is awesome. I will tell you, it is so fun. We're helping out missionaries, pre-missionaries go out on missions. 
Most of these kids don't have the funds for their suits, for their suitcases, and for their medical exams. Well, what we've done is allowed them and given them the opportunity to take those funds and be able to pay for the missions. 80% of them, the one that we helped send out on missions, would not have gone on a mission. Vanessa is one of them. Here's a young lady at 14 years old. She collects trash. She collects trash with her siblings who she takes care of because her parents are gone. She collects trash, lives in a little home, little hut. Four o'clock in the morning before they go to school, she collects that trash. It's all papers. They recycle paper. Stack them up in their house, bring it in. That's how they survive. One day, she finds a book of Mormon in the trash. She reads it. She's converted. Two years later, baptized. Here she is, two days before she's ready to go on her mission. She would not have been able to serve not because of me, but because of others, of giving her some $30, $70 total. And it's beautiful, but the life is going to change. Miguel, that's who's running our, our, our foundation down there. Now, we have a sugar plantation we're building up down there. That's going to help supply the funds necessary to end up sending out 5,000 missionaries a year. The 512 Foundation will save thousands of people's lives, we believe, all because of one little girl, my little daughter. This girl who gave everything she had, yet she felt like it was so little. It, did it impact Eric's life? No, he died a year later. But is it going to impact thousands of other people's lives? You better believe it. I hope that you can find what impact you're going to make in this life. I hope you can figure out what legacy you're going to be able to leave. You will leave a legacy, and you will make impact. I promise you that as you search for that. I appreciate your time. I love being on this campus. You guys are great. Now get out there and change the world. Thank you very much.